Hey guys, this is David Wonderlick for GatorCountry.com, and Florida notched another win in 2020, 34-10 over the Kentucky Wildcats. Now this was not the prettiest win of the year, but Florida did do some things well in this game. So we're going to take a look at the defense, some of the things they struggled with, and some of the things they did better, including some of the halftime adjustments we saw right after the break. And then we're going to look at some of Kyle Trask's best throws from the game. It wasn't his most prolific output because he's had more yards and touchdowns in other games, but he still had some great throws because he's Kyle Trask. So let's dive on in. So let's talk about run defense here. Florida has man coverage outside, and Kentucky has four receivers. There's another one down here that you can't see. And that means it's going to be seven on seven in the middle of the field. Seven guys right here for Florida, and then five offensive linemen, quarterback, and running back for Kentucky. This is entirely what spread to run philosophy is. You spread out the field so that there are fewer people in the middle when you want to run in the middle. So this run is going to go to the offense's right, and therefore they're going to leave Brenton Cox completely unblocked, and that takes him out of the play. He is going to come forward a little bit, but hesitate because he's covering in case Terry Wilson keeps the ball. Wilson is a good runner. This is Cox doing his job. So that means this is really six on six. Your six skaters right here, striking Cox from the play. And then Wilson is out, so you have five offensive linemen and a running back. So this is a six-on-six six running play. And the two Gators that are most important here are Kyrie Campbell and Mohamed Diabate. If you've ever heard about how defensive linemen need to eat blocks, this is a play where Kyrie Campbell needs to eat blocks. The left tackle and left guard are going to double-team him, and the guard is going to engage a little bit here, and then try to come up and block Diabate. If he can do that, Kentucky has a good gain. If Kyrie Campbell can eat both of those blocks, meaning just hold those guys there, then Diabate is going to be able to make the stop. So let's see what happens as we go forward a little bit. There we see the double team on Campbell right here. And Campbell is already off the line a little bit. He's not able to eat those blocks in this play. And that leaves the guard space to get up here to Diabate, and that means the running back has a nice little lane to go through, and the left guard is actually kind of tackling Diabate here. I guess the ref who's right here is just looking at the ball carrier and uh, not the tackle, and that means Sean Davis is the only guy left to make the tackle. Now, he slows up the running back, Donovan Steiner cleans it up, but this is an example where you need your defensive tackle to eat blocks. He's not really able to do it, and Kentucky gets a good gain off of it. There you go. Diabate is tackled, and eventually Steiner gets a tackle on the running back. So here we're going to look at a more successful example of this. Uh, it's second and two. Florida has four down linemen, one linebacker, so only five in the box. This looks like a good run play, but Diabate is going to come around from the slot sort of area to make it six skaters. And so Kentucky has a seven on six advantage. They want to run, and it's second and two, so they probably would be running anyway. Now what Kentucky's going to do is they're going to have the center and right guard double team TJ Slayton, and they're gonna want the center to do another one of those blocks where he temporarily blocks the defensive tackle and then move up to block the linebacker. Now, he's not gonna be able to do that because Kyrie Campbell is going to be coming this way, and he's going to be attacking uh, to his left. And essentially what this is gonna do, Brenton Cox is gonna occupy this guy here, and as Campbell, goes this way. He's going to push the left guard that way, and almost like an offensive line opening up a hole for a running back, this is going to open up a big space for James Houston, the linebacker, to come on through. So let's watch this go forward a little bit. Here we can see we got our double team here, and here comes Campbell. He's going as hard as he can to his left. And now the center has come off of the block on Slayton. He's trying to get over to Houston, but he can't because Campbell is in the way. Now, Campbell was not able to occupy two guys on that first play. Here he is occupying two guys. And now here's that big lane that I was talking about for James Houston to come on through. And he stops the running back for a loss. So this is a good example of Florida's defensive line, Slayton and Campbell. The two of them taking care of three offensive linemen and that's gonna allow James Houston to come right through Main Street and get a tackle for loss. Moving forward a bit, I'm just gonna let this run a little bit here because you can see Kentucky is looking at the defense. 
and they're actually going to check into a completely different play. And why might Kentucky do that? Here comes Terry Wilson. He's telling his guys, hey, we're doing something a little different. Well, the reason, I think, is numbers. So if you look, Kentucky has the strong side to the left because they have the tight end and the running back here. And accordingly, Florida has one, two, three, four guys to the left and one, two, three to the right. And when they were changing the play, James Houston was even a little bit to the left as well. So when you see Florida has numbers this way and fewer numbers over this way, what do you do? You decide to run to the right. So another thing that uh, is important on this play is that Florida is going to attack the middle. So they have Kyrie Campbell coming this way and TJ Slayton coming this way. They're going to attack right where the center is. And Kentucky's loving that because this play is going to go through this gap right here. And if Florida is flooding the middle, as you're about to see, right, there goes Slayton towards the middle. That means Kentucky has a big old lane. So the tackle only needs to hold this block out here. And because Slayton is going to the middle, uh, the guard is completely free to go upfield and get a block on the linebacker. So Kentucky looked at the alignment and said, hey, I bet we can get a big old hole on that side. And sure enough, they do. So here it is in real time. And you can see because Florida is unbalanced to the left and the offense is left and TJ Slayton goes to the offense's left, that leaves a big hole to the right. And the running back just says, thank you very much. I will go get a whole bunch of yards. Florida made some adjustments at halftime and the first Kentucky drive after the break shows you really well what some of the things that Florida did. So one thing that Kentucky's been doing a lot is sending Josh Ali in jet sweep motion and bringing the tight end around to the other side to be a lead blocker in case the run is going to the left. And this creates kind of a crisscross action. It's meant to confuse the defense, I think. And what Florida's been doing with the jet motion is having whoever is on that side follow the guy all the way across and because he has to go around behind everybody, that kind of takes him out of the play a little bit. So that's what Kentucky wants to see. And as this play starts before the snap, you can see he goes in motion and we've got Brad Stewart coming in motion as well. He looks like he's following the guy just like Florida did in the first half. But what you see is Stewart is actually gonna come in on a blitz and Florida is rotating Donovan Steiner down in case there actually was uh, a jet sweep handoff, which there's not. So that means that our tight end friend who's coming around this way, he wants to be able to come up here and be a lead blocker, but he sees Stewart blitzing off the edge. So he has to come out here and get Stewart. And because the tight end is blocking Brad Stewart, that means Ventral Miller right here is free to come up and get the running back. Now he doesn't quite get it cleanly, but he almost over pursues, but does end up making the one-on-one -on -one tackle. So here I'll show it in motion and you can see how Florida decides uh, we're going to rotate instead of chase and blitz Brad Stewart. And that is going to cause problems for Kentucky's run. And there goes Miller. He's got the tackle. So that is immediately right there on the first play, an adjustment that Florida made. So we'll scoot ahead to the second play here. And it is second and eight. Florida has three guys, uh, split out wide, they motion to running back and uh, tight end, and Florida says, we dare you to pass, because here are eight gators, there are other ones out that way, dealing with uh, the receivers out there, but what you don't see is any deep guys. Florida doesn't have anyone deep. If anyone on this side, like the tight end, or the running back is going vertical, the Kyir Elam here is gonna have to be the guy that deals with that but Florida is not putting anyone deep. They say, even though it's second and eight, you're backed up, I don't think you're going to attempt a deep pass. And even if it does, uh, Terry Wilson has been pretty inaccurate to this point, so you feel good about that. Now, what Florida's gonna do is have Sean Davis here come up and take care of the edge. And what does that do? That means Zach Carter doesn't have to keep the edge as Florida had been doing all first half. He can go after this gap right here between the left tackle and left guard. And as we go forward, a little bit of motion, and that's what we see. Zach Carter is just attacking this hole right here. It's not a coincidence because he knows he has Sean Davis off the edge to help him out. 
and Zach Carter is really good, as you have seen this year, and so he's able to stop the running back short. He doesn't quite get all of it, but Davis is there to clean up the mess, and Florida has a good play. So because Florida decided we're not going to keep Sean Davis back in pass coverage, we don't care about the pass, we dare you to do it, Kentucky doesn't do it, and Florida gets a nice little stop here. So there goes Carter and Davis to help. So now Kentucky is in third and long. They kind of have to pass. And something Florida does here is go after that left guard. So like I said, it was not a coincidence that Florida sent Zach Carter between the left tackle and left guard because left guard has been struggling all game. And here Florida is going to put a lot of pressure on him using uh, some trickery here. So we've got Ventral Miller showing blitz, but first what's going to happen is Marlon Dunlap right here is going to immediately go directly after that left guard, but then split off and occupy the center. So we watch this going forward. There he goes. He's engaging with the left guard, but he slips off. Now, Florida has Brendan Cox coming off the edge. He has been going edge most of the game, but he is actually going to end up going for that gap between the tackle and the guard. There he goes. And the left guard is already a little bit off balance because he had to deal with Dunlap. He's not going to be able to help because you've got Ventral Miller coming this way on something of a delayed blitz. And that means Brenton Cox is going to be able to flush Terry Wilson. Now, here on the sky cam, you can't really see it. Uh, Wilson just kind of scrambles out of bounds uh, for a modest gain, and Kentucky has to punt. So here it is in full time. And watch how Florida is just putting man after man after man into the area where the left guard is, making sure that he's kind of frozen and out of the play. Here comes Dunlap, and there goes Cox, and he flushes him, and nothing happens. So those are some adjustments that Florida made. They said, we dare you to pass, and we're not going to chase your jet sweep across the formation, and we're also going to put pressure on your weak spot, which is your left guard. Now we're going to look at some of Kyle Trask's best throws from the game. In this one, this is good play design plus good reading from the quarterback. Uh, there's going to be three levels to the right side. You've got Kamori Gamble going out into the flat, short. You've got Kadarius Tony coming up and out for intermediate. And off where you can't see him is Trevon Grimes. He's going to do a deep. So you've got short, medium, and deep to the right. And if we watch this play go forward a little bit, we'll see what Kentucky's defense is doing. You've got the corner right here. He's going to be going deep with Grimes. You've got the... Safety coming up, he is taking Kamori Gamble in the flat. So if anyone is going to cover Tony directly, it's going to be this linebacker. And as everyone knows, linebackers can't cover Kadarius Tony. So he's going to break out, and the linebacker is just, you know, hanging out in the middle of the field in his zone. So the corner right here is going to have to sort of cover both Tony and Grimes. And he's not really going to be able to do that. He can't cover both intermediate and deep exactly. So Kyle Trask, he's already in his throwing motion. He knows he's got Tony out to the intermediate zone. And there he goes, puts it right on the money, a little high, but Tony's able to make the catch. And the corner was able to recover. There's not a whole lot of yards after the catch on this play, but you can see that Kyle Trask is reading the defense. You can see that the intermediate is gonna be open and that's exactly where he goes. So he steps up in the pocket to avoid pressure and puts it right on the money for Tony. Moving on, here we are at the first play of the third quarter. And this one really shows you how Kyle Pitts, right here, frees up things for other people. So as Kyle Trask goes into his drop back, he's going to look over to this side because that's where Kyle Pitts is. And what do we see here? We see linebacker going over. We see corner here. We see safety shading over this way. We've got somebody engaging Kyle Pitts right there. We've got four Kentucky defenders dealing with that area. Now, Damien Pierce is over here too, so it's not just Pitts, but still, that's at best two for Pitts. It's probably more like three. And so Kyle Trask, you can watch his helmet. Now he's moving on, and he sees Kadarius Tony coming up here. And he knows Tony is going to be cutting inside, and Tony is going to make a cut in front of the safety, and the safety has no help whatsoever because the other safety is over here, worried about who else Kyle Pitts. So we just move right on, and we put it, again, a bit high to Tony, but why is he putting it high? Well, 
come back here, Kentucky's defensive line has their hands up. So he's going to put it a little bit high, but not so high that Tony can't get to it. And we get a nice big gain right there. So if we watch it in real time. Watch how Trask first looks to Pitts, sees that there are a whole bunch of Wildcats over there, and he knows, okay, Tony's got single coverage. I love that matchup. Let's go for it. No on Pitts. Moving on, right on the money to Tony. Moving on, here is Jacob Copeland's big 42-yard catch that he had, and we'll see on this play that Copeland was not even close to Kyle Trask's first read. So what's going to happen on the right is we're going to do a high-low thing. Kyle Pitts is going to go short, and Trevon Grimes, which you can't see over on this side, is going long. And that's the first area that Kyle Trask looks for. So again, when he drops back, he's going to look left. And you can see Kyle Pitts is here getting jammed. We've got coverage here on Grimes with safety help. So that's no good. We're going to move on. And now watch his helmet. Now he's moving on. And Tony, again, is going to be making a cut. But this time the safety has more room. And so he's going to be tighter up on Tony. That may or may not be a good throw. We're not sure. But if we go forward a little bit more, we can see right here, this is the corner that is supposed to be covering Jacob Copeland. I know it's really blurry here, but his back is to the sideline. He is facing this way, and Copeland is off over by the sideline that way. So Kyle Trask sees that, sees the guy is out of position, says, aha, that's my throw. And so he winds up, sends a big one, a big uh, throw out that way, but you can see here are the two defenders. Here is Copeland by the sideline. This is a... Uh, good calculated risk on his part and Copeland has the positioning because the other two guys were out of position and that is how you get a big gain on what appears to be the fourth read so we'll watch it in real time watch Kyle Trask's head and watch him look to the left first then he looks to Tony and then he decides I'm going to Copeland so here we go drop back looking left good coverage there Tony nope how about Copeland and there he is in front of the defender making a great catch. Finally, I could not do this game justice without a Kyle Pitts touchdown, and this is the third one of those. As we can see, he is lined up out to the left with three Kentucky defenders, along with Trevon Grimes. And as the snap approaches, we can see number 13 here is going to be an edge rusher. This is not really news because there was nobody lined up on Stone Forsyth anyway. So that means there is single coverage out to the left and anytime Florida had single coverage on Kyle Pitts they tried to exploit it as much as possible. Kentucky really looks like to me that is worried about slants over the middle of the field because this defensive lineman here is actually going to drop. He's acting like he's rushing right now but he's dropping. This guy's dropping over here. He's staying in the middle so Kentucky is very worried about touchdowns in the middle of the field. Fortunately for Florida, uh, Kyle Pitts is not attempting to get to the middle of the field. He is doing what's known as whip route, which is where you fake like you're going in, turn around really quickly, and whip around to the outside. This is the sort of route that Kadarius Tony does all the time to great effect. And there goes Kyle Pitts. He's faking inside and goes outside. And this is just unfair. Someone that big is not supposed to be able to be that agile. Okay, somebody who is Kyle Pitts' size is not supposed to be able to do this, but he can do it because he's Kyle Pitts. And Kyle Trask knows that this is completely unfair, and he has single coverage to the outside. So if we watch this in full speed, this is a really easy throw for Trask. As soon as the guy rushes on the edge, he knows he's got single coverage, and just easy pitch and catch because Kyle Pitts is completely unfair. So there you have it. Florida's defense had a little bit of trouble early on, but they made some adjustments, and especially when that defensive line was cooking, they did an excellent job at stopping Kentucky's run game. And then Kyle Trask, I mean, what is there left to be said? The dude is a Heisman candidate for a reason. So that about wraps it up for Kentucky. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll catch you next time.